हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू यूट्यूब चैनल मेडिकोस फैक्ट्री सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अनदर इम्पोर्टेंट आस्पेक्ट एसोसिएटेड विद मेडिसिन दैट इज पलमोनरी मेडिसिन एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इज अस्थमा सो इन टुडे सेशन द अस्थमा वीडियो विल बी डिवाइडेड इन द टू पार्ट्स इन द नेक्स्ट पार्ट द रिमेनिंग सेक्शन विल बी इन्वेस्टिगेशन एंड ट्रीटमेंट रिलेटेड टू अस्थमा विच वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इन द नेक्स्ट पार्ट rest of the other parts will be discussed today we are trying to provide you the best available content so do subscribe the channel and share the videos with your friends and the main purpose is the clinical medicine is also included so if you have any doubt please feel free to ask in the comment section clear so let's begin so asthma so let's see the definition of asthma asthma is characterized by chronic airway inflammation so standard feature is first chronic airway inflammations and increased airway hyper responsiveness leading to dyspnea wheeze cough and chest tightness what is the increased airway hyper responsiveness it is a exaggerated sensory and reflexogenic response to inhaled irritants clear and that irritants leads to the following symptoms like dyspnea wheeze cough and chest tightness now the asthma is clinically followed by the guidelines of gina what is gina global initiative for asthma and they have also given the definition let's see their definition asthma is a heterogeneous disease what is heterogeneous disease who is having the disease condition which is having a severe etiology usually characterized by chronic airway inflammation same it is defined by the history of respiratory symptoms like wheeze shortness of breath chest tightness and cough wheeze is generally a high pitched whistle sound and an intensity together with a variable expiratory air flow limitations these episodes are usually associated with a widespread but variable air flow obstruction that is often reversible or spontaneously or with a treatment so in asthma you can reverse the condition by giving the proper treatment this is a definition by gina as per the year 2015 clear now we will see a onset of disease of asthma that is the first appearance of signs and symptoms of asthma so atopic or extensing asthma it is a type of asthma which is a allergic in which there is a increase in the level of ige so the allergic response is high it usually begins in childhood and is associated with the history of allergic diseases that is they are prone to allergy clear and often associated with the eosinophilic inflammation clear so there will be a increase in the counts of eosinophils non atopic or intrinsic asthma is a not a history of allergy so it is a non allergic asthma and the ige levels are normal in non atopic asthma it is not associated with the allergies so allergies are not main because there is already non allergic and may be associated with neutrophilic so there will be increase in the count of neutrophil eosinophils and fauci granulatic granulocytic inflammation what is that there is a phenotypes of asthma associated with the less refractory asthma which is having the severe condition clear now what are the other variants of asthma so first is late onset asthma or it is also called adult onset asthma which is present in adulthood and is often non allergic remember that okay that late onset asthma is non allergic another is cough variant asthma it is a type of asthma in which the main symptom is a dry non productive cough what is a non productive cough that does not expel any mucus so there will be a no production of mucus that is a cough variant asthma and people with cough variant asthma often have no other classic asthma symptoms so is saying this there will be no classic asthma symptoms like wheezing or shortness of breath you will not find in a cough variant asthma next is exercise induced asthma in which the narrowings of the airways in the lung triggered by strenuous exercise or a heavy exercise and last is occupational asthma that is caused by breathing in no chemical fumes gases dust or other substances in the job related to the occupation so these are the different types of asthma now we will see the pathophysiologic features of asthma airway obstruction is there which is a reversible 
airway hyper reactivity exerted by the bronchio constriction duo stimulus as the ig levels increases it leads to the bronchio constriction because it releases the mast cells and leukotrienes and it triggers it the factors increased inflammatory reactions of airway by eosinophils mast cell neutrophils with increased mucus production and decreased mucociliary transfer so at that time there will be the increase in the mucus production what is mucociliary transfer it is an important defense mechanism by which body maintains the homeostasis by protecting body against the invading particles through bacteria clear and that protection will be decreased now what is the pathogenesis of the asthma first the triggering factors will be there and it will lead to the inflammations of the airways due to eosinophils and mast cells as there is a inflammation there will be the mediator release like leukotrienes platelet activating factors cytokines and as these all are released there will be the more inflammation and it will lead to bronchial constriction clear this i am p okay remember very well now what are the triggering factors for asthma which can increase the severity first is dust or particles who is having the size less than 2.5 mm will be carried to a lower respiratory tract so dust is the main factor another is dust mite animal dander milk egg wheat these all are the triggering factors for the asthmatic patients cold air or exercise so you will feel that in the winter the asthma disease is more severe and the patient are more prone and respiratory virus infections associated with asthma so both the condition will be together clear another is a drug can induce asthma for a non selective beta blocker that is aspirin that is semtostride remember this very well semtostride is a what is a chronic condition defined by asthma sinus inflammation with the recurring nasal polyps and aspirin sensitivity so it is a triad that is a three combinations are there clear first is asthma next is aspirin allergy and nasal polyps that's why it's called triad symptoms triad these three conditions are together so it is also known as aspirin exacerbated respiratory disease aird and non steroidal inflammatory drugs nsaids also are included in this drugs induced asthma obesity and gerd gastroesophageal reflux disease so these all are the triggering factors for asthma remember very well so these all are uh, useful for the theoretical point of view also next is dust mites what is dust mite people often say that they are allergic to dust in fact it is a dust mites that are the problem how dust mites may be the most common trigger of year around allergic asthma so the most common feature is dust mites signs of dust mite allergy include those common to hay fever itchy eyes is in nose water eyes clear that is similar to the symptoms of allergic rhinitis so as a sneezing and runny nose many people with dust mite allergy also experience the sign of asthma such as wheezing and difficulty in breathing a dust mite measures only about 1 quarter to 1/3 of a millimeter now what are the symptoms of asthmatic patient we have seen the recurrent episodes of breathlessness which can be episodic and asymptomatic between exacerbations that means the severity of a disease will increase and diurnal pattern there is a 24 rhythm cycle symptoms will increase during early morning that will mostly happen in the nocturnal asthma and in the cough will be associated with the breathlessness so cough and breathlessness if the cough is a dominant symptom then it is filled as a breathlessness so it is known as cough variant asthma where there is a cough is a dominant feature and exercise induced breathlessness in some patient it is due to exercise induced asthma and occupational asthma will improve during weekends and holidays because they will have the free from job that's why and what are the signs that you will observe only during a symptomatic so when there is only when there is asthma attack or when there are the symptom at that time what are the signs you will observe one is tachycardia and pulses paradoxes what is pulses paradoxes that will be the fall in the systolic blood pressure when a person inhales fall in the systolic bp when the person in health it is pulses paradox is a classical feature claim tachypnea unable to speak central cyanosis warm peripheries these all are the symptoms you will observe during a asthma attack in a patient 
wheeze on auscultation of chest or remember this very well or a silent chest which is a severe in a bad sign of it is where there will be a no audible breath sound because the patient is having severe airway obstruction silent chest clear it is a life threatening symptom of asthma and last is gina classification of asthma severity how the gina is classified the asthma so intermittent severity of asthma will be what you will have a less than two times a day in a week symptoms of asthma it will be asymptomatic and the peak expiratory flow will be normal between attacks and the symptoms at day will be this but at symptoms at night will be less than two or equal to attacks per month and the pef or fe level will be greater than or equal to 80 percent and variability will be less than 20 percent when there is a mild persistent asthma you will observe that symptom is more than twice a day per week but not daily an attack may affect your daily activity it will be a three to four attacks per month pef will be same and variability will be 20 to 30 percent what is a moderate persistent asthma there will be a daily attacks and it will affect your activity less than greater than one attack per week 60 to 80 percent pef will be found and less than 30 greater than 30 percent variability is there and severe is throughout the day there will be the symptoms of asthma and attack during a day at night it can be a frequent it will have less than or equal to 60 percent pef and greater than 30 percent will be the variability remember this classification very well to discuss the intermittent mild persistent moderate persistent and severe persistent so it was all about the today's session i hope that you will find this lectures to be beneficial so in the next session we are going to discuss this investigation and treatment for asthma it is also the imp session and the treatment will follow in such a way with the latest standards of the practice where you can find your clinical medicines as well so thank you have a nice day